Welcome to Human Design Uncovered. This is going to be your foundational course to teach you about human design. What is human design? What is your unique energy type? Why do we use human design? How can it help us to make decisions, to move through the world and understand ourselves even better? So welcome. I'm so excited that you guys are here and are about to discover so much of the beauty of human design. And it truly is this beautiful tool to show us who we really, really are. And I love to think of it as our soul's blueprint. Human design takes different modalities from the chakra system, the I Ching, quantum physics, Kabbalah, and astrology to come together to give this very beautiful, detailed, deep, full of depth blueprint of our soul that is here to help us in so many ways really become more of who we are meant to be and to be more of who we really are. It's this big permission slip that we didn't know that we needed. And I have found it to be such an incredible tool and I know that it will be for you as well. So as we dive in, allow all of this information just to integrate. Sometimes it takes hearing this information a few times before it really sinks in. Do not get discouraged. I recommend learning human design layer by layer. So in this first layer, we're really gonna teach, I'm gonna teach you guys about the basics of human design where it's uncovering that first layer, that first onion. And from there, getting to understand yourself and the basics that I'm teaching, and then go deeper. If you are still feeling it's resonating and you wanna go deeper with that, I invite you to start to learn even more about your gates, about your channels and your incarnation cross. But one thing, one beautiful layer at a time is going to allow you to really take this information and not only learn it, but embody it as well. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jessica Rose. I'm an energetic and business mentor, and I love to mentor women with heart-centered businesses and helping them to add more of that flow, that goddess energy, that divine feminine mixed in with the divine masculine support of human design to really co-create the life and business of their dreams. You know, we're not here to get rid of the masculine in this new era that we're into. It's really about bringing the balance back. And so I have found that there is this beautiful balance of the divine masculine support, the structure of human design with the divine feminine goddess power that we all have within. Okay, so I love this quote about human design. Human design offers a mechanical understanding of the nature of being. And with understanding comes genuine revolution, the realignment of a life and the awakening of awareness. And that was by Ra Uruhu. He's the founder of human design. He, uh, in the 90s, downloaded all the knowings and the wisdom of human design and started to share it with the world. And I love how really it is. It's like when we really understand ourselves, it becomes this revolution. It becomes this stepping into our power, stepping in who we're really here to be with this conviction and also showing us where we've maybe been misaligned in life. And now we have this compass. We have this tool of human design to help us get back into alignment. And really this self-awareness of who we are and what our energy is all about and how it best operates and how we can utilize it in the most potent way. So for this human design uncover the agenda, what we're going to go over. First, I'm going to go over the five energy types of human design. The energy types are essentially how you operate within this world. And it also tells us a lot about your aura. So we all have this electromagnetic field that is a part of us and it is our aura. 
when we are with somebody else, we can feel when we feel them say they light up a room or maybe we walk into somewhere and we can feel the tension like a knife, we're feeling their aura. So you're going to learn about your unique aura based on your design. Then we're gonna go into your authority. So your authority is unique as a part of your type also comes a certain authority, but that is not necessarily unique to say you're a generator, you might have an emotional authority, but you can still be a manifester with an emotional authority. But the authority is gonna tell you basically how you best make decisions and how to use your inner compass. And then we're gonna talk a little bit, it's not on here, but a little bit about the centers of human design and what that means and what that looks like and what that can tell us. And then lastly, we're gonna go into your profiles and that's going to give us some insight to your personality, to how you see yourself, and to also how other people see you. So again, these words might sound foreign to you right now, but trust me, we're going to go into this one by one, and you're going to leave fully understanding this. Really, I love to teach human design in a way that we can understand. So there are no fancy words here as much as possible. I want to keep it very succinct and very easy to adapt these principles. Okay, so we have the five energy types of human design. They are the manifestors, which make up 9% of the population. We have the generators who make up 35% of the population. We have the projectors that make up 20% of the population. The manifesting generators, 35% of the population and reflectors, 1%. I love to look at the energy types as all of them come together to make the world run in harmony. Every single energy type is needed. There is no energy type that is better than the other. There is not one that is more successful or has more potential for success. Every single one does. And in every single one is needed in our evolution and in our growth on this earth in our lifetime. So how I like to think about this is the energy types, I like to think of them as a movie. Okay, and we'll, we'll go into each of the types one by one. Life is a movie. Okay, let's just say life is a movie. And all of a sudden, someone gets an idea for a certain movie. So I get the idea that I wanna make a, a movie called Home Alone. And so I have the idea in my brain and I start to initiate making this movie. That is the manifestors of the world. The manifestors are the producers of the movie of life. They get the download and they start to initiate, okay? How we have this idea, we've got the production, we've got the money funded, now we're gonna start creating this movie. This is where the generators and the manifesting generators come in. They are the ones that are bringing these ideas to life. They are building it, they are making it happen. So they are the film crew, they are the actors. They are the ones who actually bring the movie to manifestation. Then we have the projectors. The projectors are like the director of a movie. We need someone to guide us. We need to, someone to see things that we may not be able to see or that we overlook to have us create the best movie possible. So the projectors are that guide. They are that director that are constantly guiding us and showing us things that we may not be able to see and sharing that wisdom with us. And then finally, we have the reflectors. So the reflectors are really that evaluator of the movie. It's after the movie is out, the reflectors is the person watching it and giving us the two thumbs up or the two th thumbs down. They're really that mirror for us for, you know, how life is going. And they also inspire us to be better. So they're really that reflector. They're really that mirror for us. And they are the people that are reviewing the movie itself. All right, so let's dive into the different five energy types. First, we have the manifestors. So the manifestors, your role in life, you are the activator, 
you are the fire starter. You're here to initiate, you're here to get things started and you're here for impact. This may be something that seems foreign to you because when we are growing up, we can be subject to a lot of conditioning. And for manifestors, since manifestors don't really like to be told what to do. And so not being wanting to put in a box. And so growing up, parents may not have known what to do with us. Teachers may not have known what to do with us and, you know, told us we were too much or maybe we got in trouble. And so to adapt, we dimmed our light. We dimmed our power in order to be liked and loved. So sometimes in the beginning, this can seem very foreign if you're learning about your human design, but this is the essence of who you are. You are very powerful. And your strategy, so our strategy in, tells us how we're meant to make decisions, how we're meant to operate in life and go about life and going after the ideas that come to us and, and our desires. And so the strategy for manifestors is to inform, okay? So you are meant to, you're the only energy types that are meant to have, take an idea and initiate it into action. This is how a lot of the world is conditioned to be, right? We're told just do it, go after it, but you are the only ones that are essentially actually energetically made to do so. Now, you get this drive, you'll get these hits of inspiration and downloads and the idea and you just go, right? You just go. But oftentimes, people are not going to know what you're doing and they want to know. They want to know. And we can forget, you can forget to inform people about what you're doing. And, you know, it makes people feel appreciated if we keep them in the loop. And you may not even realize that you're doing this. This could look like, you know, you're, um, you, it's end of the night with your spouse, you wake up in the morning and you decide to go for a run. And instead of leaving your spouse a note, you just go off and go on the run. And then you come back and your spouse can be like, well, where did you go? Like, I had no idea. And you're like, well, I just went for a run. What's the big deal? Informing them is helpful so they know because they want to know what you're up to. You're, you're an enigma of some sorts to people and they don't fully understand you. So the more that we can inform, the more you can inform and let people know what you are doing, the less resistance that you're going to come up with. Now, this also looks like this is not asking people for permission. This is not, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to go do this. What do you think? It's you've already made the decision and you're letting peace, people know gracefully. It's not letting people know, like, I'm doing this. This is my way, the highway. I don't care what you're going to do. You can do that. But to, again, face least resistance is to inform them from this place of like grace, but power. This is what I'm doing. Hey, I'm letting you know, this is really important to me. I'm going to get up and go on a run every day at 5 a.m. Or I'm going to invest in this course. And it's really important for me, for my growth. And I just want you to know that. That's how informing can look for you. Okay. Now, your self and not self theme. That is really telling us essentially what alignment feels like for you and what misalignment feels like for you. So when you're in alignment, when is all as it should, when you're in that flow, it feels like peace. It feels like peace for you. When you're out of alignment, this feels like anger. So anytime that you're feeling any sort of anger, that is your alarm telling you that you are out of alignment. We can, manifestors can become angry, especially when our creative flow is interrupted. When, you know, that desire to, to get that idea and move is interrupted, that can make us angry. Also, when we move, we like to move quickly and not everybody moves as quickly as you do. So that can bring up some anger. So that is always a sign for you that you are out of alignment. Now, manifestors, your aura, remember I told you that you're the electromagnetic field around you, your aura is repelling. It, that can sound like 
a disadvantage, but it's really a filter. You're not meant for everybody because you are so powerful, you are so impactful that it is not meant for everybody. Not everybody is ready to hear some of the truths that you have. And so it's almost like a broom. It's almost like a filter. It's sweeping away the people that are not aligned for you or ready for you yet. And this can come across almost like a lonely feeling or you feel like a loner at times because you are the one that goes first, you know, and you are somewhat misunderstood. The best thing I can say is to get comfortable with that, you know, and there are the people, there are still people, tons of people that are going to love you exactly for who you are. And those are the people that are going to be magnetized by you, but there are also going to be people other that are not. And that's okay too. It's really releasing the need to be liked and loved by everybody. So some famous manifester is Jennifer Aniston is a famous manifester as well as Adele. And, you know, I think of it as, you know, Adele really brought this beautiful, similar to Taylor Swift, like storytelling in her music. And it's very much on the pop radio, but not necessarily maybe like a catchy pop song that you would think of, right? She's here for, to bring something different into the world that hasn't been brought before. Jennifer Aniston really uh, brought a different look to Hollywood, you know, more of that girl next door, more of that authenticity and, you know, her hair, right? She had that iconic haircut, you know, she was really bringing things to the world that had not been seen and, and, and she's impactful. She's influential, deeply, deeply influential. Okay, so the next up we have the generators. The generators, their role, their role is the life force. You are the life force. What makes you a generator is in your center. So our centers are loosely based on the chakra system and the chakras we know are energy centers that we have. Same thing with human design. We have energy centers and what makes you a generator is your sacral, so the center that is of desire, of passion, of life force energy, yours is defined. So you have that energy consistently. That's what means that you're the life force you are. It's literally in you, uh, that deep desire, that passion, that ability to the energy to get things done. Also, that was one thing I did not say about the manifestors. Manifestors, you do not have that consistent energy of that sacral. So you are not meant to work a nine to five. You're not meant to work all day long. You're gonna have these intense spurts of energy also with periods of rest. And they're not gonna make sense when they come and when the spurt or the rest comes, it's going to be different all the time. But know that you need those periods of rest and know that those periods of that spark energy will come. Now, generators, you have more of that consistent energy, especially now, if you don't feel like you have consistent energy, if you feel exhausted, that is a surefire way to tell you that you are misaligned somewhere and there is something that is exhausting you. You're the builder. You're here to bring manifestations to life and you're here for mastery generally of one or two things that you're really here to master and teach. Your strategy is to wait to respond. So where the generate the manifestor can go out there and initiate and make things happen, you may feel like you want to do that or you should do that, but that's going to be a surefire way to set you up for more resistance. The universe is always bringing you things, generator. They're always bringing you like a magnet where you pull experiences and situations and people and opportunities into your space. And so your job is to respond to that. Your job is to respond to those things. You can have the idea and then wait, wait for it to show up in your universe to respond to. So this could look like, say you wanna go on a trip to Hawaii, you have that idea. And then you're just driving to your doctor's appointment and all of a sudden you see a billboard up on, this, on the street and it says like, aloha. Then you respond, ooh, yes. 
hell yes, this feels good. I want to go on this, right? It's going to show up in your universe. So trust, trust that you're always going to be given something to respond to. And what this feels like for you, it'll feel like a, uh uh-huh, which is a hell yes for you, or a, uh uh-uh, which is a no. The more that you follow those things that light you up, those hell yeses, those uh uh-huh, that is going to be your path of alignment and the path to your desires. The more that you ignore those hell yeses and you you focus on the shoulds, like, this is a no, but I feel like I should do this because, you know, I don't want so-and-so to be mad. That will deplete your energy and throw you off of your path. So a big thing for you, not only is waiting to respond, but letting go of any shoulds in your life that I should do this or I should do that because you have that beautiful work ethic and you will stick to something even though you don't necessarily want to, but that is depleting your energy. That is depleting that beautiful life force energy that you have that makes you so magnetic. There is nothing more magnetic than a generator with that sacral lit up. When you talk about something that you're excited about, it draws people in. Like they start to get excited too. I don't have a sacral because I'm a manifester, but when I'm around someone with a sacral and I can like, I'm tuning into their energy and the thing they're lit up about, I'm like, oh yes, what is it? I want in because it's so magnetic. Now your self and not self theme. So your alignment is going to feel like satisfaction for you. Satisfaction at say maybe the end of the day of how well your day went. Like, oh my God, that was the best cup of coffee that I had this morning. And that was the most beautiful run. The weather was perfect. My clients, like the conversations were amazing. You just, you look back and it's like, "Ah, yes. Whereas if you're out of alignment, it feels like frustration. It feels like irritation, like smoke coming out of your ears. So if you know, if you feel like you're frustrated, that is your, your ding, ding, your alarm that you are out of alignment. Now generators, sometimes the way that really your energy is and your trajectory is, it almost is like a staircase. You'll have these periods of expansion and then a little bit of a low, expansion and a lull. And sometimes during those lulls, you might feel like nothing is happening and that can cause you to be frustrated. But again, instead of taking an urge or an idea and running with it and facing resistance, wait wait to respond, wait for the universe to bring you the thing to respond to. So a lot of it is trusting that it is coming to you. So your aura is very open and enveloping. And that's what I mean. It's like you bring all of these beautiful things like a magnet to you. And you do have that beautiful life force energy that you can, you you have more of that energy to make the thing happen, which is beautiful. So two famous generators, Jennifer Lopez and Beyonce. And so similar, right? They're here for that mastery. Beyonce, you know, she started in a girl group and then went on her own. And she's really here to like master music and performing and her identity and expressing that. And same thing with Jennifer Lopez. Again, like she's mastering a couple different things here, right? Singing, acting, dancing, but really that like entertainment and that girl, they both have that energy, right? Where they say like, you have the same hours in the day as Beyonce. Yeah, but Beyonce is a generator with that, you know, incredible life force energy of that sacral that, you know, a manifester, a projector and a reflector do not have. So a lot of people are going to want to be like a generator with that energy when they simply don't have it, but you do. And when you follow the things that light you up, it feeds that energy for you. All right, next up, we have the manifesting generator. So this is a hybrid of the manifester and a generator. Now your role is you're the express builder. You are like Superman and Superwoman. You could do all the things and multitask. And you're here to do things faster. You're here, you know, to find these shortcuts. You're here to think outside the box and you're an expander. When I think like it's a time bender, you collapse time for people, you expand them and you think of new ways to do things. 
Now, because you are still the hybrid of the manifesting and the generator, you're still going to follow the strategy of waiting to respond. So you can have an idea and, you know, the universe is going to bring you that thing to respond to, and then you go out and do it. You're going to go out and after that response, go out and sample it. Now, lots of things light you up to sample. You have multiple different passions. So you're going to go out and sample and see, again, you're going to tap in again to your sacral. Well, do I like doing that thing? Does it light me up still? Or am I like, mm, nah, not really. And then go on to the next thing. People can think that maybe you're all over the place or maybe growing up, maybe you tried a sport and you didn't like it, or you want to try lots of sports and then you didn't like it. And your parents are like, What's wrong with you? You're a flake. You're not a flake. That's literally what you're meant to do. You're meant to sample it to see, okay, does this really light me up? And if it does, that's when you inform. That's when you tell people, hey, oh my God, I'm learning about human design. It's so incredible. Come join me on this journey, right? But you get to wait to respond. So maybe you like see a sign on Instagram for a course and you're like, Ooh, that course on human design. Ooh, uh-huh. Hell yeah. Sign up for it. And then you're testing out the waters and it still lights you up. That's when you inform. Okay. So you're still, your first strategy is to wait to respond and really follow those. Uh-huh. Or uh-uh. And then you're going to, what we talk about later, use your authority when making the bigger decisions which may include your sacral, may include just following those yeses and nos, but there may be more layers to that, which we will go over. Yourself and not self are going to be the same as the generator, satisfaction and frustrating, frustrated, and your aura is the same as that open and that enveloping. But you really are that super person that is meant to have multi-passions and be able to, um, simultaneously do things and do them fast and, and have shortcuts. And so to a lot of, you know, a lot of people to your condition can condition you to believe that you're too much. You have all this energy, you have all this idea, all these passions. You're never too much. You're too much is just enough and never dim that part of you. Q famous manifesting generators is Tony Robbins. I mean, you think of Tony Robbins, that man is Superman and so much intensity and power. And imagine if he dimmed his light. Imagine if, you know, he was told too much and shied away. He would not have been able to change as many lives as he has. And Jessica Alba, I think of, you know, she's an actor and she's a mom and then she owns the Honest Company brand and I think she's doing beauty now. Like she's very multi-passionate and really able to hold that all. All right, next up we have the projectors. So the projectors, your role is you're the seer. You're able to see things that other people can't see and you're really here to guide the collective. You have this way of noticing people's limitations or blocks that they're not aware of. You're really able to just really pinpoint and see what other people overlook. That is your gift. It makes you an incredible coach as well because you're able to see these limitations. Your strategy is to wait to be invited. Now, this is only, our strategy is really for the bigger decisions in life, okay? So that doesn't mean you have to wait to go eat dinner <laughs> to be invited. This is for when we're making some big decisions, like big investments or buying a home or buying a car or, you know, the bigger things. And you're going to want to wait to be invited. And you have all of this wisdom and you want to be able to share it with people like, hey, I can see the thing that's wrong with you. Like, let me just tell you. But when you don't do that and you just tell the person, it's not received as well. They may think that you're a know-it-all or like, I didn't ask you that. But when they come to you for that advice, when they ask you for your advice, it is, a, it is so well received. It's the, the beautiful sage wisdom that they needed but it's that waiting to be invited. So what this can look like in your business is this is saying, this is not like you can't go talk about your products. This is finding that worth in yourself 
and like realizing how wise you are and talking about the thing that you love. So if you're into human design, talking about human design on your stories, on your posts, and when you do that, you will be invited. People will start asking you, oh my gosh, I want to learn more about this. Do you do readings? I've seen this with my clients that are projectors. There's just this beautiful magnet of when they're showing up and sharing and first seeing themselves as worthy and the expert and knowing others follow. And it comes in the form of an invitation. For you, your alignment is success. And for you, you are not self. You're, when you're out of alignment is bitterness. And projectors so deeply want to be seen. Seen and heard. But you may not feel like you are seen or recognized. You may feel like you're overlooked, especially by some powerful manifesting generator with a ton of energy. You also, you don't have that sacral energy. You don't have that consistent energy. A nine to five is also not meant for you. You're here to take naps. You're here to have those periods of rest. You're not here to act like a generator or a manifesting generator. So there can become some comparison of like, well, I don't have that energy, you know? And so I'm not seen, I'm overshadowed. And that can cause you to feel bitter. Whereas when you start coming from alignment, sharing and, and really self-validating yourself of I matter and I am wise and I do have things to share, that shows up as people fully seeing you as the wise, incredibly wise leader that you're here to be. As we're entering this new era and this, this new into the next you know, decade, 20, 50 years, projectors are really becoming the new leaders. The manifestors used to be the leaders of more like royalty and kings and queens, like initiating and telling, delegating to others. But now it's coming from this more heart-centered space. Projectors are really here to lead, to guide. Really not to be, not to tell, but to guide. And so you really are an incredible leader once you start seeing yourself as one first. So your aura is very focused, ab absorbing, and that focused is ability is able for you to really see underneath things about people and, and yourself in that way that other people can't. So some famous projectors is Princess Diana and Obama. Again, like powerful leaders, right? But not maybe necessarily the loudest, you know, uh, it's just that very wise old soul wisdom is really how I see them as um, charismatic, you know, very, very moving with their word, but doesn't have to always necessarily say a lot. And then lastly, we have reflectors. So reflectors, your role is you're the evaluator. You're, you're here to be that mirror. You're here to really tell us in the world how we're doing as a planet, as an, uh, in our evolution and in our consciousness. And you're here to inspire transformation through that as well. Your strategy, as far as how you're meant to make, those, again, those bigger decisions, is to wait a lunar cycle, 28 days, at least a lunar cycle. Again, we talked about those energy centers, those nine energy centers that we have. You are either A, you have these centers that are defined, colored in, which means it's a consistent energy for you, or you have an undefined center where it's open, it's white. You don't have that consistent energy. You take it in from others rather than emitting it out. So a reflector, every single one of your centers is undefined. You are taking all that energy in. And so because of that, you're, you don't have any one thing that is your authority. You don't have an authority. And because it's open, really our biggest and energies that affect us the most are the sun and the moon and the earth, really like we're the closest to them. So especially reflectors, your connection with the moon is huge. And so waiting that lunar cycle, those 28 days to really reflect, talk through, 
um, talk it over, talk it to somebody about that decision before you make one. And also to be on your own, like away from other people's energy and their thoughts. Because when we have an undefined center, we can take on other people's emotions, their ways of thinking and their energy. And so it's almost like the sponge. So especially for you, you're going to want that time alone and be able to separate, okay, what's other people's and what's mine to be able to come to that decision. So alignment, what alignment feels like for you is like surprise. It's going down the street and like, oh, there's that jaybird and oh my gosh, there's a feather and, you know, just being delighted constantly by light. And you're not self, you're a when you're um, out of alignment is that disappointment, kind of that, that disappointment in the human, <laughs> the humanness of people and almost like that letting down feeling of people. And it's really like, cause you're that reflector, right? If you're around like a toxic environment, you know, it's going to drag you down and really leave you disappointed about the human race where if you're around people that are high vibrational and healthy, you're going to reflect back that delight, that surprise, that higher vibration. So again, for you, it matters the environment that you're in, the workplace that you're in, the people that you are around, even more so than the other types. It's important for everybody, but even more so for you. So if you find yourself sick or with illness or stressed out and you're not really sure why, definitely look at all those different pieces, the people, the place, the environment, your workplace, and take it seriously because it could be affecting your health and your well being. So, your aura is resistant and sampling. And again, because it is taking on so much that it's just, it's sampling the different energies. So, the famous reflector is Sandra Bullock. So beautiful. I love her so much. And, you know, I, I really feel like she just emanates such a beautiful you know, positive way of being. And I feel that she really takes care of that. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure she doesn't live in LA. Like she moved away and, you know, adopted this child and really created this like beautiful environment for her. And um, it really reflects in just the way that she shows up in her energy. So those are the five different energy types. Okay. So can't change those. Those are who we are. And Instead of wishing that we were a different one, wanting to be a generator, wanting to be a projector, manifester, you know, part of it is really self-acceptance of the type that we are and really owning the beautiful gifts that it does bring to us. Okay, so let's talk about the energy centers in the human design. So this is a human design body graph. So the body graph is, is essentially a map that's going to tell you about your unique blueprint. It's gonna show these nine triangles and squares here. And there's also gonna be little numbers in the shapes as well. So when you're born, essentially the human design is this snapshot of the energy that was in the cosmos and around at that time that you were born, okay? So certain things are going to be activated within you, certain centers, certain gates, certain channels, which will go, you know, that's a little bit more in depth, but I will touch on it a little bit and will also give us your profile and based on, you know, which centers it activates or, or defines is going to tell us a little bit about what energy type that you are. Okay. So remember I talked about, this is that sacral that I was talking about, the thing that makes you a generator or a manifesting generator is this energy center here. And that means yours is defined. It is colored in. So what that means is that is energy that is consistent to you. That is always available for you. And it's energy that you essentially give out. Okay. So manifester, projector, reflector, we don't have the center. That's part of what makes us the other type, okay? Now remember I talked about reflectors, they don't have 
how all of these are colored in, the yellow, the green, the brown, reflectors have none of that colored in. So it's completely undefined or open. And that means, again, you don't have that energy consistently. You're taking that on from other people. So based on who you're around and the environments that you're in, you're going to pick up and, and draw in that energy. But it's not consistent for you. So we have nine centers and they each represent a certain part of our being. And again, there's no good or bad if we're defined or undefined, but in general, when we're defined, because it's that consistent energy for us, it's almost like a natural gift for us. When it is undefined, it's also a gift in that it makes us very empathetic. It makes us um, where we're able to see all sides of things. And it can also be a source of where we might have some deconditioning because we may have taken on, right? Because we take in the energy, we may have taken on unhealthy beliefs, patterns, and thinking about ourselves in the world that are not tr the truth. And so in those centers where we're undefined, where it's, it's white, it's open, there's gonna be a lot of that like inner work that we get to do to make sure that we're coming from the highest frequency in that space. And so whether we're defined or undefined, we can always like, just because we have that energy doesn't mean that we're using it. So we can always come from this place of a, a higher expression or a lower expression of those centers, okay? So let's start with the top. So the top is the head center, okay? The head center is, it's where we receive inspiration. It's where we receive ideas. And if you have this defined, you, it, it comes more naturally for you. If you have this undefined, you may get confused by all the different ideas that are around you, like social media or people, and you're like, you know, I just want the answer. I just want to be inspired. But like, you feel like sometimes you can't think of it on your own. That's not undefined because you're kind of picking it up from everybody else. So the head centers where we really get that inspiration. Then we have the Ajna, which is this green triangle here. And that's our awareness center. That's where we take ideas and process them. So if that is defined for you, if that's colored in, then you to, in general have a set way that you process information. You know, maybe like um, even more opinionated about things because it's like, well, that's, that's the way I think, that's the way I always do it. If it's undefined, you don't have that consistent way that you process. So sometimes this can look like, you may even feel dumb. Like I don't, I don't have the answer or I don't have an opinion. You know, where someone that you meet maybe have like a very, very strong opinion one way or the other, but you don't because you're aware, your awareness, you're able to see all sides. Okay. So really that inner work for you is seeing that it's like, even if you're undefined, it's a wisdom because you're able to see all sides that you don't necessarily have to have a set opinion. You were told by the world that you do, but you don't have to. Next, we have the throat center. So the throat center is really where we, we manifest. We bring things, we speak the manifestation. It's obviously our voice and our expression. So if you have this defined, you really have that way of expressing yourself through your voice. Your voice has power and we, you, you know, it, you can say things in powerful and a succinct way. And now this is undefined. It doesn't mean that you don't have power in your voice. However, you know, some, it's not just expressing yourself with your voice. Sometimes you're going to find you can express yourself through other avenues like writing, singing, music. There's going to be other ways for you to express yourself. And sometimes with the undefined, you may feel like you're not heard or that people talk over you. And it's really, this can make you either not want to talk at all or like overly talk, 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 so you're heard. But that's not going to help you be heard anymore. It's just knowing that, you know, um, 
you, you may have that feeling of not being heard, but you are and really when you're coming from alignment and saying what you need to say, it will fall on the right ears. Okay, next we have the G center. So that's this yellow one here. And that is our center for love. It's our self love, our self identity and our direction. So if you have this defined, if it's colored in, you pretty much have a set, like you know who you are. And in general, you know the direction in life. So this could look at maybe you were five years old and you knew you wanted to be a doctor and you ended up being something in the health field. You know, you kind of just know your direction and who you are. When this is undefined, you don't have that set identity. So you may be kind of flailing or be like, well, who am I? And what's my label? And what kind of coaching? And what kind of niche, niche am I? And that can kind of trip you up. But you're not meant to have a set identity. It's fluid. It's always moving and changing. And so part of your inner work is owning that about yourself, that it is always changing and that is completely okay. All right, then we have the heart center or the will center. And this is the area of, it's our ego, it's our willpower, it's our motivation center. So if you have this defined, you have that inner willpower, that competitive edge that it's called the entrepreneur center, like that, that drive for success. And, you know, just comes more naturally to you. Whereas if it's undefined, you don't naturally have that motivation. So for you doing something like, you know, a, a 75 hard diet challenge, it's going to be hard for you to be consistent. Whereas somebody with a defined, it's going to be a little bit easier for them. And with the undefined comes this like comparison of like, I'm not good enough or they're better than me. And um, really just this comparison is that can take us out of our power. So just knowing it's okay. Not, there are not a lot of people that have a defined heart. I think it's about 30%. And we're taught in this, in our society to act like we have a defined heart to be motivated, to go, to do this thing, to, to go, 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 to hustle, but not everybody has that and that's okay. All right, next we have the solar plexus. So the solar plexus is our center for our emotions. It's an awareness center. It's really, really where we express our center, ourselves. And if it is defined, that is what makes you, and we'll talk about it later, have an emotional authority. So if it's defined, you have these emotional waves and these intense emotions of high highs and low lows. You feel deeply and you feel incredible highs. And it's, it's biochemically a part of you. So maybe you were told you were too sensitive or you're you know too feeling, too emotional, but there's literally nothing that you can do about it. And it's a beautiful thing that you experience all these ranges of emotions. Now, when it's undefined, you can still be deeply emotional, but it's you tend to take on other people's emotions depending on who you're around. So when you take it on, it, it just kind of can feel like chaotic and a lot for you. And you might have a hard time expressing and, and dealing with your own emotions. Like they are uncomfortable for you. Confrontation can feel uncomfortable. Just these intense emotions can feel uncomfortable. So you might want to like push them away and not deal with them. So sometimes you can come across as like, you know, bipolar you know, roller coaster emotions or an ice queen because you don't know how to deal with the emotions or you're taking other people's emotions on. Next, we have the sacral. So again, that's the one that makes you a generator, a manifesting generator, and that's your life force. That's your sexuality. That's where your desires are. So when you have this defined, you have that consistent energy. It's, you know, one of the greater motor centers that provides us the energy. So if you're undefined, you don't have this consistent energy and it's why you need those rest periods. It's not that people with a defined sacral don't need rest, they do, but they do have access to more of that energy. 
Okay, next to last, we have the spleen. That's our intuition center. It's our immune system. It's also an awareness center. It's um, also, you know, again, the immune system and like our health. And it's a fear. It's where kind of we experience those survival fears, fears of not being enough, fears of failure, fear of the past. But it's also your intuitive center. So if you have this defined, you experience those like, quick knowings and just that, that, that intuition is like there it's quiet then it comes quick and then it's gone, but it's there. When it is undefined, you're still highly intuitive because you're taking on and feeling other people's energy. And it can also make you a little bit more prone with your immune system uh, to be run down because it is, it's not a consistent energy for you. Okay, then lastly, we have the root center. So the root center is also a pressure center. And it's really that like pressure to get things done. It's our adrenaline and how we deal with stress. If you have this defined, in general, you're able to handle things under pressure well. You're able to handle that stress. You may feel that pressure. It's almost like a pulse, like a pressure to get things done. But that's not where you're meant to make decisions from, right? Your decisions come from your authority, which we will talk about. If you have this undefined, it may, you might not handle things under pressure as well. It's also a timing center. So either you might be like super early on time or late, but generally and not as much on time. Like your concept of time is not as consistent for you because that energy is undefined and you take on that energy from other people. And, you know, it's, you might not have that center, but you like will still act like you have that energy center. And so you can become uh, adrenal fatigue, right? Where it's like, you know, tapping into something that's not there and you can get burnt out. So, I mean, either defined or undefined, but especially undefined, you could be prone to that burnout. So that's just an overview of our centers. So I recommend taking a look at your design chart. There's a ton of free charts out there. Mybodygraph.com is a great one. Jovian Archive, J-O-V-I-A-N archive.com. And you plug in your birthday, you plug in the time that you're born and the location, and it's gonna pop up this map. And a lot of it's not gonna make sense, but you can look at it what's your type, what's your strategy, what's your authority. And then you can take a look at these centers and just see which ones are colored in and which ones are not. And then review this portion of it to kind of give you an idea of what that means because there's a lot of information in these centers. It's such a beautiful opportunity for you to do more of the inner work um, and removing some limiting beliefs and things like that in these centers. I also have, a program called The Sweet Spot that dives into four of the most, what I feel important centers there are and how you can tap into their highest frequency. So if the centers are calling you and you want to dive into them more, definitely check that out. All right, so I'm giving you, this is my, <laughs> my chart. So I'm giving you a little look here at what the energy centers look like defined or undefined. So you can see my head center at the top is undefined. And it's even more so, it's actually open. And the reason why it's open is because, see these little numbers here that are highlighted and colored in? This has none. So it's completely open. There's no gates. These colored, Numbers are called gates. And again, that's another, like, it's another um, energy flavor that you have that will activate another part of your personality. And tell us a little bit more about your uniqueness. Then there's also channels here. And that looks like here where there's this connecting tube. And that's a flow of energy. That's like a consistent flow of energy that you have if you have that certain channel. 
Okay, so you can see here, this is completely open. There's no gates, there's nothing, no color, there's no colors, nothing. Then you look at my Ajna that is undefined. So there are a couple gates here that are colored in, but it, the whole thing is not colored in. Then we have the throat. My throat is defined. My emotional, my solar plexus is defined. My root center is defined and my spleen. And then here you can see the G center, the heart center and the sacral are undefined. Okay. Amazing. All right, now we're gonna get into the inner authority. So our, your inner authority is how you are meant to make decisions. And it's different for each of us. You know, you're gonna use some of that strategy, right? Way to respond and initiate to help you go about life and respond to things. But when it comes to making some of these bigger decisions, you're going to turn to your, your inner authority to help you. Okay, so sacral authority. If you have a sacral authority, again, it'll tell you, it'll say, you know, authority, sacral, emotional, self-projected, splenic, it's going to give you the title on your body graph. Sacral authority, you're supposed to respond in the moment. It's going to give you an answer based on your excitement level. So again, kind of what I talked about with generators and manifesting generators, it's referred to as your gut response. It's either a yes or no. It's a uh-huh or a uh-uh. And if you're not feeling like you're like, what if I get a, I don't know. If it's an, I don't know, that's a not right now. That's a come back to it and ask yourself later and see where you are. Because got to be a uh-huh, a hell yes, or else it's a hell no. So how you're meant to make decisions. Here's the thing too in human design. We never make decisions with our mind. We are never meant to make decisions with our mind. And that part of our center, it's always supposed to be with our authority and the parts of our body. So for you, it's your sacral. It's that gut response. Emotional authority. If you have an emotional authority, you have that solar plexus center defined. So you have those emotional waves. You have those highs, you have those lows. And so you're meant to give yourself time before you make a decision. Usually about 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours, because you can be in a high high and maybe see some sort of program or thing that you want and you're like, oh my God, yeah. And you're almost like riding off your high or that person's emotions and you make that decision and you say yes. When that happens, you will often have buyer's remorse the next day. Same thing, if you're in a low wave and you're just not feeling at all and you make a decision to do something, to try to maybe feel better, that's not gonna work for you either. You're supposed to ride this wave and, you know, there's going to be a time where you're not in the high, high or the low, low, you're kind of in this more place of neutral and things are going to be more clear for you. So when you're seeing something you like, take it to heart and you're like, oh yeah, but wait and see, do you still feel that pull, that clarity, that, that desire for it, even when you're in that neutral space? So definitely giving yourself time, ride that wave. Splenic authority. You're meant to really listen to your present intuition and your body. It's going to be like a voice or a feeling that speaks to you in the moment. It's not based on logic. And it's, you know, what people refer to as that instinct. It's like that hit that you get. And it might be, it's different. It might be a, a knowing for you. It might be a feeling. It might be a voice. And for you, you're really able to tell like, you know, you walk into a room and you can just sense when something's off. Again, that's like your authority and that splenic, your spleen talking to you. So using it to help you to make those decisions. Again, not the logical part of you, the ego, but your intuition. Okay, if you have an ego authority, how you're meant to make decisions is to think about what's in it for you. And that may sound selfish. I'd be like, what do you mean if it's in it for me? Like that's, that I'm not supposed to care about anybody else. But 
what actually is for you will serve everyone else around you. So it really is all about if you want it or not. Does that decision make you feel good? Does it make you feel like you're in your authentic power? And if so, then it's a yes and know that that actually will serve everybody else around you by following that. But you're not meant to talk it out or see what anybody else thinks and, and really running the ideas of like, oh, it'd be good for so-and-so and so-and-so. It's what's in it for me. Okay, G-center or self-projected. So uh, projectors will, some projectors will be this. You're meant to talk it about. You're meant to hear yourself talk about it. So your clarity comes when you're sharing these thoughts with other people. That inner voice is going to kind of come through for you while you're talking about it. Maybe you like hear a tone in your voice or something that blurts out to you is like, whoa, yeah. And, and you start to be aware of that and that's going to help you make that decision. So you're really meant to talk it out. And you're not, you're, again, you're like being a sounding board. People are a sounding board for you. They're not having you make the decisions. They're just giving you that space to talk it out. Mental authority. So mental authority is more on the environment, also known as environmental. You're supposed to receive guidance from, sense, from talking it out or being in the environment. So like, you know, maybe if you're thinking about getting married somewhere, it's physically going to that place and talking it out or being in there and seeing how you feel. Or, um, being around the person in question that you're like wanting to feel out, witnessing the thing that you desire and deciding from talking out and being in it or like sensing it, what you're pulled to do. So really your environment and the talking out are gonna be so critical for you. And then we have lunar authority, AKA no authority, and that's the reflectors. And you're supposed to give yourself a full lunar cycle at least to make important decisions. So 28 days. This does not bode well if you're buying a car and you're around a used salesman that wants you to make that decision right away. And so a lot of your work is going to be holding strong in that and not trying to be like anybody else and make those instant decisions because you're not meant to. You are literally not energetically made that way. And when you can give yourself that lunar cycle, that time, that time alone, that time with your own energy, maybe this looks like talking it out as well, but giving yourself that time to come to that place of clarity. Okay, so we have gone over the types, we have gone over the centers and your authority. And now we're gonna go into your profiles. So when you receive your human design chart, it's going to say usually a number before it. For mine, it's three, five, emotional manifester. So the three and the five are our profiles. And that's based on the I Ching. And it's based on <clears throat> also looking at your, your son, your, the energy of your son. So again, when, when you're born, there's a snapshot and it's looking at, okay, what gate was activated in the sun, like in the planetary sun when you were born. And we look at the sun and the earth the most, because again, that's the energies. Those are the planets that affect us the most energetically. We receive 70% of our energy from the sun and the moon. And so we look to those to really tell us a lot about our personality. So how you find your profile is if you're looking at this chart, these things on the side here, this is where the astrology comes into play. These are all representing different planets. So the sun, the earth, the moon, all the planets are going to be on either side. So there's two sides also. We have our, our body, our mind, our conscious part of us that we are aware of. And then we have our 
unconscious self, our soul. And, you know, we, we talk about like mind, body, and soul, right? So it's really combining the body and the soul together to give us a viewpoint of who we are. So on this side, again, that's more our body, our conscious. And on the left side is our soul. So we look at both to give us a picture of who we are. So to find our profile, we look at our sun sign and we see the number the, to next to the decimal point. And so that's gonna be the top line. And then we look at our unconscious or our soul side and we look at the sun there and we look at the decimal point next to it. And that's how we get our profile. So again, we're taking that where we get that most of our personality from, which is the sun to give us some keys, key insights into our personality. And that's why it comes up with a fraction of a number. So you're taking the two um, I Ching lines of the sun to give you that fraction. And that's going to give you some insight to your personality and really who you came here to be and what your um, trajectory of life looks like. Okay. So if you have a, lot, uh, a one, two, or three in your profile, the trajectory of your life is going to, it's more of an inward focus, focus on self. If you have a four, five, or six, it's more of an outwardly focus on life, more of like for others, whereas the first three are internal. So let's take a look. So look at your fraction and you're going to pull out and take a look at the numbers that you have. The first line, the top line is your conscious the profile that is conscious. That is the profile, the part of your personality that you are more aware of, that you probably identify with. The second, the line on the bottom is your unconscious. It's a profile of your unconscious. And that is a part of you that you may not identify with and you may somewhat, but it's how other people see you. So this is giving us ideas of awareness of how we see ourselves and how other people see us. So if you have a one in your profile, the ones are the investigators. So I study is an affirmation for them. They are curious, they are creative, they have this energy of wanting to know all the facts, all the research, get to the truth of everything. And so there's this deep desire to know. So if you're learning about a certain subject, you want to know everything about it, every detail, and you're, you're so curious about it, which is amazing. It makes you such a great teacher at what you're teaching because you know every single detail. Now, where we can trip ourselves up is, you know, there's always that desire that we need to know more or we don't know enough. And so for the, line, for the ones, it's really understanding the point where knowing enough, like we're never gonna know every single thing, but we can still turn around and teach. We only have to be a couple steps ahead to be able to teach. So it's that giving yourself that confidence of I do know enough and then going out there and doing it. All right, you got two in your profile is known as the hermit. Your affirmation is I wait for the call. So if you have a two in your profile, that is a part of you that needs that alone time, that needs that time to be immersed in yourself and your own energy. And, you know, so you, it doesn't mean that you don't like people. It's just maybe you need that time to recharge. And, and that's okay. The, you can go back and recharge and then the world's going to pull you out again. Like, hey, we need you. And it's going to feel like this, like pulling in time, and then you're going to be pulled out. The other thing about Align 2 is you have such natural talents. Things come so easy to you, but you may not realize that. You, they'd be like, well, how do you, how do you do this? Like, how do you know how to dance like this? And you're like, I don't know, doesn't everybody? Because it's so natural to you, you forget that it's even a gift that you have. So for you, it's really understanding these natural gifts and talents that you have and being able to showcase them with the world. 
because people actually don't know how to do it as easy as you do, and they deeply desire to know. So owning those natural talents that you have, and then also honoring the times where you do need to be alone. All right, three lines. Three lines are called the martyr. And the affirmation is, I make trials and errors. So if you have a three in your profile, you are here to experience things and try things out. You are meant to learn things through trial and error. If someone tells you that the oven is hot, you still have to touch to find out. And you are meant to experience these things in life. That is how you learn. It's not for someone telling you what to do. It's through you going through it. And it's through this experience that you learn wisdom that you then turn around to teach. And so for, for three lines, it's really letting go of that shame or thinking that you're a failure. Especially the first 30 years of your life, you are going to be going through so much trial and error. I'm a three line, so I understand this very well. And that there are no mistakes. You know, I, I applied... I was a med school student, I didn't get in. Then I applied for nurse practitioner and I was waitlisted. Then I became a nurse, you know, and it looked like all these like areas of failures, but they weren't. And they brought so much wisdom that I'm able to share now. So it's really about knowing that about yourself that you're really here to experience. And that's how you evolve is through that experience. Okay, four lines the opportunist. I externalize my, I externalize my convictions. So four lines are naturally have a friendliness to them and they are meant for a personal connections. It doesn't mean that you're like some social butterfly. It could be, but this is like, it's a networking. It's, you know, um, your clients might come from like a referral from like a friend of a friend and this close network. And, you know, because you have that natural friendliness and you have that connective ability, that is one of the beautiful ways that you um, will grow, especially in your business, is through these connections to other people. And the thing to know, too, is that you get to be really particular, you know, if people are not adding to your energy, it's okay, like if the group that you're in is not adding to your well-being, it's okay to go for another, another group. Because you do give so much and you're really meant to receive that as well. And so finding those closer relationships that are really, really filling you up. Okay, five lines, the heretic. So I universalize my solution. So the heretic you are um, a natural leader, even though you may not realize it. And people tend to come to you because you're able to help them. You're able, you have the answers to their problems. You have the save the day energy. And you want to help people. But for you, a lot of the work is going to be realizing that we cannot fix everything and realizing what's worth your energy. And so how do we help people without doing everything for them while still empowering them without giving away all our energy? Because we do, there's such a big part of us that wants to come in there and help. The other thing about the five line is there's tend to a little bit of a mystery towards you. And you, you have a pro, like a projection, like it's almost like you're looking out of this door and like projecting out your energy. So you almost, you tell people about you or like what you want them to think about you because they will always, they will tend to look at you as like superwoman and you do these things with ease and grace and they don't see some of the underlying things that you deal with, the struggles, the hardships, the times where you're overwhelmed. They only see that superwoman type energy. And so it's up to you to you know, really project out what you want them to see. Be like, well, actually, yes, I do go through these hardships and I, you know, and, and X, Y, and Z. And if you don't, people will project their things onto you. 
So that does happen a lot. It's almost like a people love you or hate you, or they may project things onto you that are not true. Like, oh my gosh, she's the most selfish person in the world. And you're like, what? If you knew me, I am actually the most selfless person that I know. But it, there's a projection that they can project onto you. If you don't hold yourself in who you are and really outwardly show people what you want to be seen as. So stepping into that leader role, but also knowing where that boundary is between doing something and doing everything for somebody and um, empowering them. And then finally, we have the sixth line, which is the role model. And the mantra affirmation is I envision the new. And so the role models, you have this visionary quality. You have so much wisdom, so much wisdom. Like you can literally go on a live or go somewhere to speak and just naturally comes out this beautiful reflection and wisdom. And you also have these three phases of your life. You're going to have the experimenter, the observer, and the leader. So the experimenter is the most thir the first 30 years of your life. And you're going to be more like a three line where you're trying things out. You know, you're experiencing, you're kind of bumping into the walls and, and turning direction. And this might be kind of hard for you, harder than a three line, because you may be more of this like perfectionist and really get hard on yourself about calling yourself a failure. Then from the ages 30 to 50, you're more of this observer. It's also known as being on the roof. You've kind of taken the wisdom that you've learned from the last 30 years and you are integrating that and, and just kind of watching the world as you integrate, as you put those things into practice and seeing what others are doing. And then finally, from 50 on, you're really in that leadership role. You are, you know, really sharing that wisdom. You're sitting back and directing. You're guiding humanity in a new direction. You're taking all of that experiences that you've learned and even more wisdom, you are guiding other people. So it's really all about those three phases, but also knowing that just innately you have this wisdom that needs to be shared, that gets to be shared, and really owning that part of yourself. Okay, so again, if some of these parts of your profile are like, oh, I don't know if that resonates with me, it could be A, it's your unconscious part of your profile, so you're not always as aware of it, or you're not living authentically in your alignment through conditioning, through, you know, beliefs. Maybe you've always told yourself, I'm not a leader or I'm dumb. And so that's actually not your truth. You know, your truth is that you're wise. Your truth is that you're a leader. And when you come back to that, when you come back into alignment with yourself, you're able to come home to these truths about who you really are and what you came here to do. Amazing. So that is human design uncovered in a nutshell, your basic foundation for human design. So now you can take a look at when you get your body graph or you can look at people that you love and take a look at theirs. You're going to be able to tell what their energy type is. You're going to be able to know what their strategy is. So are they meant to initiate? Are they meant to respond? Are they meant to be invited? You're also going to be able to look at their authority and how they're meant to make important decisions. You're going to be able to look at their centers and tell you a little bit about their centers, their energy, what's consistent for them, where they may be open to other people's energy and ways of thinking. And then you're also going to be able to look at your profile and those numbers and other people's profile and be able to tell you a little bit about your own personality and their personality as well. And I invite you to do this with friends, your spouse, your children, and really getting to know about them and their unique energy. 
It really helps us to understand people on a deep, deep level of why they are and why they do what they do. And we can begin to see, wow, okay, that's why I do this one thing this way and why my spouse maybe does this thing that way. And coming from this beautiful place of understanding from a whole different way that we might not have seen before. And then also give you some guidance for you of really who you are, what your energy is like, how it is meant to feel and show up in the world and really the gifts that are unique to you that you have and how can we turn the value up, up, up on them and where can you see where there may be some inner work to do on owning these parts of us that maybe you have pushed down or not realized about yourself. So make sure to let me know on Instagram, Facebook, all the things, how this course worked for you, what insights you got, what aha moments. And if you are wanting to dive more into the centers, be sure to like check out the sweet spot. And that will give you a dive deep into more of the centers and how to come from our highest frequency within those centers. I also do one-on-one -on -one human design readings. So if you are wanting to dive even more into your own chart to learn your purpose, to learn your spiritual path, your intuitive gifts, your life purpose, your soul purpose, more about your gates, more about your channels, I invite you to book a reading you can DM me on Instagram or check out my profile. There's a bio a link that will connect you to a book an appointment for that. All right, sending you guys so much love. Until next time, bye for now.